In today's show, we're gonna let your users use Power Apps to add data into a choices column that's not there. So basically, if they search for a different, bunch of different colors and the color they want is not there, we're still gonna let them save that value. So give us a chance to explore a couple of different sites. We're gonna use a combo box and talk about some crazy stuff along the way. So, should be fun. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're gonna have a little bit of fun with a combo box. So sometimes you have a drop down, like we, you want your users to choose something, right? So red, blue, green, but maybe they wanna use pink today, or yellow, or green, or teal, who knows? So what we're going to do is we're gonna show you how to have a drop down, and then have a search text with it, and if they don't find what they want in the search, just accept their search text as the value that we pass over to a choices column. So this would work the same whether your data source was SharePoint, so kind of fun, kind of interesting. And what's fun about this, I think the most, is we're gonna explore a little bit of mechanics. So even if you don't love like what I do, and we'll talk about why I don't love what we're gonna do, you, it's gonna at least show you some of the different workings of how these columns work and some things that you probably didn't know you could do. So let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. All right, so the, very, the first thing I should do is show you this demo app and explain to you what's happening because some of you are probably from the explanation like, what? That's fair. So here you can see Nicola's favorite color is currently green. If we click edit and we hit the drop down, we know we can change it to blue. They say save, that works, right? No big deal. Edit, we also know that this is a combo box, not a drop down, it's a combo box, so I could search. So if I couldn't find purple, I could start to type in PU. Oh yeah, there's purple, and great, save again, it works. But what if you want a color you can't say, find, right? So if we do edit, and so what if I'm going through the list, I'm like, hey, I wanna use fuchsia. And so I type in fuchsia, Nothing is found, but I want to use this value. Well, I can just hit save. Ta-da! And it saves Fuchsia. Now, interestingly enough, in SharePoint, this is a choices column. So if we go over to SharePoint, we go to list settings, and you can see Fuchsia is right there, so it did save in SharePoint. Under list settings, we have favorite color, and Fuchsia is not a favorite color. So what's interesting about SharePoint is that when you have choices column like this, so we have red, blue, orange, purple, green, those are the choices that will be returned by like the choices function. Um, if we were using SharePoint UI, they're the ones that'd be given an option, but you're allowed fill in choices. Even though it says allow fill in choice no right here, it doesn't matter, that just takes away the UI for it. SharePoint supports you writing values there that don't exist. So you can come back to my little fancy app, and I'm gonna show you how to do it in just a second, and be like, oh, instead of fuchsia, I want hot pink, right? Very fun color, save that. Nicole's favorite color is hot pink. So this is something that people ask for about once a month. I get a comment, uh, came up yesterday on one of our uh, office hours. So every month, all the people that subscribe to any of our training stuff, they have a call with me and Daniel LeMay where we answer all the students' questions, right? It's a heck of a deal if you haven't looked into it. But as part of that, this came up again. I thought this would be a fun one for you guys to share how I would do this because the demo I did live yesterday, I was like, I can do better. So this is the better. Anyway, um, so with that, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to kind of be able to see how this all works, right? You probably need to understand it. So I thought it was easier to understand it in little pieces and then we'll come back to big pieces. Okay, so let's go over here to this screen. So over here, I have a uh, combo box, and the combo box, the items property, wherever items property is, right there, is just your normal choices, employees, favorite color. Now, there you go. And so if we hit the, hold down the Alt key, press the drop down, you see the values, right? Notice that you don't see fuchsia or hot pink or any of that stuff, because this is only returning the things that are specified here. So that's important. But so now if I, you know, I got Nicole's record selected, or just hit play real quick, and if I choose blue, save choices, updates to blue. All right, you guys have been doing this for a long time. This is not new. If we look, I'm using a patch here. So patch the employees list, the selected record, set favorite color to combo box one dot selected. Um, so that's pretty typical. Now, as we go down this rabbit hole, right, where we're about to go down, um, I want to point out that, you know, the, the governance information architect of me hates this video. Why? Because one of the reasons that you use choices is so that you can have data consistency, right? You want people to be able to search, sort, filter, all of that by values. 
And if you don't, if you let people start filling in things like we're about to show you how to do, you can get yourself into trouble, right? Because one person might upload it and say this is for dogs, one might say it's for puppies, one might say it's for bow wows, right? All three of those things as humans we know are those furry creatures like Chewy, right? But what happens is now you can't sort on, you know, show me all the records for dogs because that would leave out the ones marked as puppies and bow wows and rovers and whatever else you call dogs, mutts. And so you have to be really careful. I, I don't like showing you guys this, but enough of you have asked, I thought I was, I felt compelled to do it. Okay, so there you go, there's my piece. I won't say anything else. Shh. Okay, so that's the, the most common way you guys have seen this before, great. Now, what if you wanted to just hard code patch it all to neon green? Well, that's this button. And so this patches employees the selected record and it sets favorite color to value neon green and it bolts in this OData type thing. So if you've never watched the video on patching complex columns, this is your video, right? If you're watching this, you're into SharePoint. And if you're into SharePoint, you're probably gonna to need to at some point patch people columns and choices columns and multi-choice columns and multi-people columns and, and lookup columns. There's a lot of complex columns and they're all very difficult. So I have a whole video on that. I will point to that. I will put the little card up there that gives you a link to it. You should watch that video. You probably need to understand that video to completely understand what's happening here, okay? So back over. So that's what we learned in that video. Here's how you would patch a hard-coded neon green. And if we press this button, we'll see that Nicola's favorite color becomes neon green. All right, still not what I promised you, but we're moving in that direction. So next up is a safe search text to selected record. What? So what you probably never thought about, you didn't, I don't, I didn't say you didn't know, you never even thought to think about it, is that if you go to a combo box, right? So if I select, uh, put a label on the screen, I do combo box one dot search text. This is the current value in the search text. So if I go up here and use my combo box and clear out blue and try to search for aqua, aqua is returned as a string, right? So that is the combo box one search text. Yeah, I bet a light bulb came on for about most of you, right? So if we go here, what am I doing? Patch employees, gallery one selected again, set the favorite color to value combo box one search text. So that is how we are patching the value from the search text. That's how we just updated it with fuchsia and hot pink. And now if we did it, it would go to aqua, right? If we press this button now, Nicola's favorite color will be aqua, which now makes me think of Barbie girl, right? The Barbie girl songs my head. I'm a Barbie. Sorry, I can't sing. It'll be a violation of YouTube's policies. I can't do it. So, interesting, right? There's more to learn though. I didn't think that was enough. So what I ended up doing was I said, hey, I want to save either the search text or if they leave this box blank, right? So if they set this box to not have any search text and not select anything, I want to patch, I want to select, uh, set it to like no color selected. So press the button, let's see if it works. It does, how does that work? So here I thought we would have a little fun with, I'm just gonna hit format text, make it easier to read. I would have a little fun with our coalesce function, right? Remember this is what I did a video on like last week, two weeks ago, I don't remember when, very recently though. And this says, give me the first non-blank value. So this is, hey, coalesce combo box search text. So if combo box search text is blank or is not blank, then use it. If it is blank, then go to the next line, which is a hard coded text, no color selected. So that's how I have this one button, right? So there it patched no color selected. But if I go up here and search for hazel, I don't even know, is that like a brownish color, I think? I'm, I, I failed art class, I'm not gonna lie. But now if we press the button, we should see her favorite color is hazel. Yeah. You guys getting it? So if you understand this portion, right? If you don't, pause here, go back and rewatch that section because you need to wrap your head around that. Because once you understand it with patch, and I just think patch is easier because we're not, there's not so many moving parts, right? If we now go back over to our form, because over here, when we edit it, right? So if we do an edit and we uh, set the favorite color, we just get rid of this and we set it to teal. And we go to set save, right? What does that do? That just submits our form. Well, if I show you on select, you'll see that in just a second. So that just submits form. And then when that submits form, what you're going to see is that you have to go look at this data card. So I had to unlock this data card, so advanced and unlocked it. 
And then I changed the update property. And I said, hey, update property, I want you to coalesce whatever. Uh, so first look to see is data card value four dot selected. So is this combo box? That's the name of that combo box right there, right? We can just rename that, call that CB um, fave color. So it makes it easy to read. There you go, so click on the card again. So if uh, coalesce, so if combo box flavor or fave color selected, if there's something in there, then use that. If that's blank, then I used this syntax to get that record form, right? So this is, uh, remember, uh, combo box fave color selected is a record. And so in order to have coS use it, because coS we always think of text, but it can look at a record. So if this record is blank, when we put something in curly brackets like this, that makes it a record, which happens to be in the same exact format as this record, which is very important. So then now it would use combo box uh, flavor search text. So then now we get um, that. And so right now, if I go here and I clear this out, so if this is blank, right, so there's not a selected item and the text here is blank and we hit save, what happens? <gasps> we just set her favorite color back to nothing. So if you wanted to do the whole no color selected again, what would you do? Go back to here. And right here in this section, we would just put our co another coalesce in and say, hey, if that is blank, then use no color selected. Close that. There you go. And so now if we hit play, and now if we edit, and we'll choose blue just to make sure that works. Blue works. We'll edit it. Now we'll say, let's make sure that um, hmm, burnt orange. There you go. Trying to make it funny colors. And like I told you, I'm bad at this. So if we do this, it should change your favorite color. Two scenarios work. And then last but not least, if we clear out burnt orange and we don't select anything, so this is completely blank, we save it. No color selected, do-da, do-da. That's kind of fun, right? So once again, I don't love the idea of you guys messing with your metadata this way. But if you want to, you know, because I know some of you have business requirements. Like I said, it comes up enough that I know you guys have requirements where you want to do this. Now you're empowered. And even if you don't want to do it, hopefully now you get some new ideas about how things work, right? Knowing that combo boxes spit out search text. Reminder that using coalesce is so much easier than saying if is blank, use this, else use this. Coalesce is a neat little, little tool in there. And remember, there was a coalesce video about a week ago. I guess I should put a video link to that as well. And that's all I got today, right? Nice, simple, straightforward, but kind of fun. If you have any questions, any comments, leave them below. Ideas for future videos. Oh, you know what? Actually, so the one thing that is worth noting, right? I mean, we talked about this already, but all these extra colors are not showing up over here. How would you make those show up? <laughs> We're not going to do it today, but there is a way using the REST SharePoint REST API. If you guys want to see this thing explored and explained, tell me below and we will add a video. Maybe, maybe we'll make the video next Monday about how to write this flow that when they add hot pink, not only does it add hot pink for her favorite color, but it actually goes and adds a hot pink right here for you, right? So that requires flow. Kind of fun. Or if you want to ask me questions directly, personally, and on a phone call once a month, then join office hours, right? Go to training.powerapps911.com, sign up for anything out there. All of them include, all of them except for the curated library. So there's a curated library and there's a curated library with office hours. Every, the curated library does not include office hours, but the curated library with office hours, surprise, surprise, includes office hours. And then all the other training classes, we had a bunch of training classes coming up, they all include office hours. So, cool. All right, with that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.